and welcome back to this week's video. So, hopefully you guys would have seen the video before this which is a day in my life but I'm currently filming that today and I wanna, I'm on a roll with this, this filming thing again because like I said in my previous video, the past month aka July hasn't been the best for me but I'm feeling so much better now and I'm ready to get back on my YouTube and vlogging game so I'm starting today off by filming this video and filming another video at the same time so I'm multitasking which is great but anyway enough rambling on today's video is a lovely book video because I do really enjoy like filming these and I know they don't get as many views as I wish they would but I just I don't care I just love talking about books and today's video is about books I've bought recently and about to read and books I've been recently really enjoyed and that you guys should be reading now or adding to your like to reads list if you don't know, I also have a Goodreads account which is at Frank Alibi. I will leave a link to my profile in the description box below if you guys want to go and follow me and know what books I'm reading right now or have read in the past. I don't know. But yeah, so without further ado, this is what I've been diving into when I'm on the way to work or in the evening or when. I'm on my day off and <laughs> I'm just losing myself in some pages. So yeah, just carry watching. <laughs> you can tell I haven't filmed for so long because I'm just talking about everything and nothing and nonsense. Ah, okay, so I'm going to start with the books I've read recently. I've literally bought three books and read three books. I'm currently in a fourth book. I've read another book, but I don't have it because it was lent to me. So I'm not gonna talk about that, but again, good reads, check that out for my review. And the first one I read is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And I'm not one for reading a lot of classics and I've not really been a big fan of classics, but this year, 2019, was the year of reading all the classics. I've read Emma, I've read Frankenstein, Dracula, and Wuthering Heights was next on my list, and I'm obsessed with classics now. I don't know it's because the covers are just so appealing, like this is such a gothic cover. I'm actually obsessed with it. This is part of like the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition, so the pages that look like really old which is really fascinating to me but Wuthering Heights is such a classic story in itself it's quite dark gothic none of the characters are likeable especially Heathcliff and Kathy like nah Kathy I don't like her at all but it is actually told from this perspective of one of like the housekeepers I think honestly it's been a little while since I've read this so but there's also a new tenant Mr Lockwood he's called so he becomes a tenant in Heathcliff's like second home I want to say so he gets to know Heathcliff and then he wants to know why Heathcliff is a certain way so the old housekeeper of that house is the housekeeper of Mr. Lockwood's like tenancy place or whatever. So she tells him the story of his childhood and Kathy and things like that and it's just it's just weird. I can't describe that like particular moment where it's really gothic, but the ending is I was shocked, like I didn't realise how much I would love this book. It's amazing, it's so well written, like honestly. I can fully appreciate classics like this and what else can I say? I don't know, I'm very good at describing plots as you can tell but I don't want to talk about it because I'll reveal spoilers and I want to reveal spoilers but you know me, I don't, I want you guys to read something and find out for yourself so Wuthering Heights is just amazing and very much so a lot of twists and turns and shocks and 
yeah, amazing. <laughs> and the other one, I really read last year, but I wanted to read it again, and it's of course The Mars Room, which very much gives me Orange is New Black vibes because it's about a lady who gets sent to a women's correction facility based on a crime she's supposedly done, but she's saying that it's because this guy was stalking her. It's like that thin line between is she actually guilty of this crime or is it just purely self-defence? And she just talks about her life before going to the prison because she's from San Francisco. So she talks about her job in the Mars room which is basically kind of like a strip club where she met the guy who was stalker. And she's just talking about her son, her family life, her childhood and things like that. But then you also get like little scenes of her at the Stanville Woman's Correctional Facility. It's a bit like it wants to back where you see them in prison, how they interact with inmates and then you also see like how their life was before and what led up to that crime. So yeah, it's just really good. It's told magnificently well and I just love it. And there is quite a few inmates who annoy me <laughs> and then you also get points of view from like the people who work at the room correct your visiting so like I said very much Orange is the New Black and I absolutely love it and of course a pink cover is obviously a win-win for me because I love pink and it's my favourite colour. The other thing I've read is A.M. Holmes' Music for Torching. This is an older book. I've had this probably longest. I've probably bought this like two, three years ago and I've only read it once, picked it up again and I immensely enjoyed it. And it's actually about a suburban family in America. I can't remember where they live but it's about Paul and Elaine who have two boys a beautiful home but they feel like they're stuck in a marriage and their life and they just want to get out and then they end up burning their house down and it's everything leading from that and then you get to see how they interact with their neighbours and their parents and their children and like what happens and then the ending is a little bit random it was a little bit shocking didn't get it but it's a general really good book and you kind of feel sorry for them because they're a couple who feel like they're stuck with each other and their life and they just want to do something different so they look for those different ways to get out but they can't and yeah it's just, it's just really good so if you're looking for something quite different because this is definitely something different from what I would usually read then definitely give this a go because I'm more of like a I don't know how to describe it, but I just wouldn't usually want to read about a couple in a suburban place stuck in their lives. Like, I would want something with more mystery and drama, but what I was gonna say is really good. And then the other books are books I bought recently, and I am planning to go back to Waterstone and find some more books. But I thought I'd start off with these and the first one is from one of my favourite authors, Sophie Kinsella and it's called I Owe You One and it sounds very typical Kinsella, like I love her books because they're really like hearted and funny, like they're not serious so if you want something to cheer you up or something just easy going then definitely read Sophie Kinsella's books. So it's basically surrounding Faxi Far who is in the coffee shop and someone asks her to watch his laptop and she does and then he says I owe you one but she doesn't know how to do it until like her crush comes back. Something like that. I will let you know what I think of it and what it's actually about. In fact I will put the descriptions in the description box below of each book so you guys can read it because I'm not, I don't want to read it out and bore you but yeah this is the first book I've got. Then the next one is of course another classic because I'm obsessed with my classics and I actually bought Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre? Is that how you say it? And it's by Charlotte Bronte, the other sister and just look at this 
stunning cover. Like, it's just so beautiful. I love these additions and I just can't wait to get stuck into this. I'm definitely gonna read this after the book I'm currently reading. And yeah, again, pages look stunning. And I'm definitely gonna try and find more of these editions because Penguin Classic Deluxe Editions are just stunning. And I just love the illustrations in general. And these are just on point, like honestly. <laughs> and then the last one is Margaret Atwood's Cat's Eye. So I've got two of her other books. I've got Elias Grace, which was made into a Netflix series. I've also got Blind Assassin. And yeah, that is it. So I bought Cat's Eye because I really love her writing. She writes in such a way that you just want more of it and you kind of feel sad when the book is finished. And this one is actually about someone called Elaine Risley who's a painter and returns to Toronto to find herself overwhelmed by her past. So basically it surrounds her memories of childhood and things like that and she has to confront her once best friend about something that happened years ago. I don't know but again description in description box and I'll let you know if I like it but Margaret Atwood is such an amazing writer like I said and yeah she's just written a lot of classics and she's best known for The Handmaid's Tale which is a really good series which I've heard <laughs> I haven't read like watched it yet but it's on my like Netflix is it on Netflix or is it on BBC I don't know but yeah, that is on my list. So that is everything that I've loved and I've bought recently book-wise. So if you guys did enjoy this video, this short and sweet video where I've just rambled on about everything and nothing about books, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe and click notification bell to get updates next upload. And yeah, I will see you guys next week for another video. Goodbye!